So the UML has three types of different diagrams. The structure diagrams, which uh, indicate how the system should be built, what sort of components it should have, and how it should be uh, deployed when finished. The behavioral diagrams, which indicate how the system should behave in different use cases, and the interaction diagrams, which tell what sort of messages and activities should happen when the system is functioning. Uh, the first class, uh, well, or group, the structure diagrams, include class diagram, component diagrams, uh, composite structure diagrams, deployment diagram, object and package diagrams. The class diagram, as illustrated here, is one of the most used class diagrams. It describes the concepts of the system. It's usually the, one of the first ones defined when the system architecture is being built and it's also usable considering that you can expand or uh, define details in class diagrams with uh, analysis approaches such as BCE analysis which we will be discussing later. Basically the purpose is to identify the concepts of the system, identify the needs for interfaces, identify the needs for the uh, data which the system will manage and different types of messages and connections between the components. So basically all the basic stuff of how the system should, uh, should be built. The component diagram on the other hand goes more into the physical nature of the system. The, in the component diagram we actually define the components or objects which are combined and integrated together to form the entire system. On the component diagram we have to take into account more things like the platform or the uh, development engine or things like that which affect the uh, actual layout and architecture of the program. This diagram is useful in a sense that it illustrates what's compo what components are communicating to each other and it also gives an idea on what components will the final system have. The composite structure diagram goes inside one of these such components which were defined on the last diagram. The composite structure diagram more or less defines the classes, their interfaces and internal structures uh, going even into the variable level of the one module. Typically this could be used in really detailed design work which could be useful in Medicare, military applications or space industry, but uh, my personal experience for example has been that I haven't seen this diagram have much use. It exists to allow us to define these things if they are necessary, but in practical sense it goes so close to visual programming that it's usually not that useful in practical sense. However, this is one of the new additions with the UML2 notation and it's there to allow us to go into that level of details. The object diagram, however, differs from the class diagram in a sense that the class diagram, like this one here, defines the different uh, classes and the different information we will have on these classes. Like the connection between class and object, the class diagram and object diagram share the similar connection. The object diagram shows, as an example, all the object instances and their connections within one moment of using the system. So, for example, it's useful, useful for defining the data structures in use or giving more details about how some database is constructed and what connections there are between tables when the system is operational. The 
actual physical layout of the system and the software and all the parts like browser, server system, cloud uh, system, databases, log files and these sort of things are then illustrated in the deployment diagram. This is actually one of the most common diagram, surprisingly actually one of the most common diagrams I have seen in uh, real organizations. The d deployment diagram describes the hardware topology, meaning that it includes definitions for things like what sort of server system the uh, application will be having, uh, what sort of a workstation or working platform will ha we have, what sort of input-output controls we have, locations of databases, and all, overall several practical things uh, related to the developed system. This is also a nifty tool for assessing if there's bottlenecks for performance or what are the critical parts of the system. Also what sort of services we have to have and what sort of what types of connections the final system will be having. It also gives the idea of size quite well so it enables us to assess the costs of maintenance and these sort of things. Uh, the package diagram, which is also last of the structure diagrams in UML, is more or less a meta diagram, which is useful for, for classifying different diagrams into larger packages. It more or less shows the uh, hierarchy and connections between different packages, and in some uh, uh, development tools, these packages are also importable or to form a folder hierarchy or well uh, any other hierarchy on which to classify different diagrams because one project can have something like hundreds of different diagrams and views and drafts and documents the package diagram is basically the first answer on having some sort of a uh, order in the chaos of different design documents and other specifications.